Hello from Ukraine. What's up? I just wanted to record my thoughts real quick. Today is my last day in the Ukraine. Very interested. I don't. I, I, I don't even expect myself to be in the Ukraine. <laughs> if you told me that, I don't know, five months ago, which is really really interesting. Anybody that hears that I am going or went to the Ukraine. It's like, what the hell are you, Ukraine? Like, what? What? I don't know. I guess my kind doesn't usually come to the Ukraine. I don't know. It's weird for them. Uh, but I really just wanted to record my thoughts because um, it's good to document where you're going and stuff. So I stayed here for 10 days and today is the last night. Tomorrow morning, we're taking the Turkish airline straight to Turkey for two hours and then uh, 10 hours to the U.S. Of course, here I had to, per U.S. Uh, requirements, I had to take the COVID test. It had to be 72 hours before. So any international flights, 72 hours. So... Uh, we went to a COVID clinic. They do the COVID test a little differently than the U.S. I think most states, they just take a, you know, something in your nose. They swap something, right? And then they'll do the test over here. They do one and one, and one, of, uh, one swap here, one swap here. And actually, one swap in your throat as well. Ah, it's... It's a little tough, but you got to stay still and kind of like open your mouth and then they do it. It's not so bad. It, it takes, you know, unless you're just like very scared of everything, you'll have a problem, but that's how they do it here. And I guess, I guess it makes sense. So whatever. Um, actually, our test was in the morning. So the guy who made the appointment for us said, don't eat or drink anything. And we we're like, what? Why? It's not like it's a blood test. Uh, and then he told us that the tradition in Ukraine is you never eat or drink before seeing a doctor. So <laughs> that's their, that's a tradition here, which is really interesting. Uh, anyway, we did that. Uh, sometimes it's not easy to find the addresses here. And, you know, you use Google Maps and it, it'll show you where it is. But you really got to look for it. Some, sometimes it's not so straightforward. Uh, we visited a city called Kharkov. Uh, there's another city that a lot of people um, people visit, which is Kiev. But Kharkov, one of the most surprising things for me is how clean this city was. I was so surprised. It's a it's a developing country. The country is developing, right? You'll see roads that have potholes. You'll see um dirt roads you know um it's almost like a very old new york city but very very clean and it was really weird i'm like whoa like it, it's kind of like part of their common sense which is really cool new york city is so trashy right <laughs> so you can't even compare and i can't even compare this place with a lot of places so it turns out they used to have I don't know if it's a president or a mayor who always walked around. Maybe it was a mayor who always walked around this city. And if he ever saw in a, in a place where there was garbage, he would call the representative for that area. And he would tell uh, him or her, if you don't get this place in order, you are fired. So to make this part of people's common sense is pretty cool not to see garbage everywhere. It's it's so, it's it's really really cool. I think so. Another thing I realized here is it is very safe. Which is, you know, given that I was raised in New York, and I moved to North Carolina, you don't really see that. You don't see that. So, um, kids, I see kids taking public transportation and walking alone late hours and. Um, I think there was at one point where we saw we saw this girl who is probably 
nine or ten and she heard us speak in English and, and she speaks very little English and she was asking if we were talking in English and we said yeah we are and she was trying to speak then we asked her where's your mom and she basically said oh her mom is like jogging somewhere and she's just she kind of just left her here to play have you ever seen that in the U.S.? Yo, parents, when they take their kids to the park, they're so fixated on their kids. And this was a busy park, which is really, really cool. Another thing I noticed about kids, yo, kids here are really, really, really interesting. It's like, um, how do I explain it? They, they definitely seem less spoiled, that's for sure. They seem less spoiled and uh, much better outspoken, I guess. Like, fast-spoken. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they're, 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 they're more mature. They're definitely more mature from what, I, from what I see and sense when we were, like, talking to the kids. Um, their motor skills, really quick, too. I don't know. Just kind of like small things I, we, we noticed uh, as we walked here. Um, not a lot of people speak English here, so I had to use a lot of Google Translate, but really nice people, man. Overall, Ukrainian people are really beautiful, nice people, very peaceful. Everybody's doing their thing, and we definitely had no problems. Uh, one thing that's really cool, we visited a mosque, right? A mosque is a, a Muslim church, right? And we were talking to some people there, and they said, you know, Islam, Islamophobia is not, it's like really doesn't really exist in this part of town, which really surprised me. And it's really, really cool, right? Really, really cool that, you know, those judgments are, are not around and people are open-minded and receptive and non-judgmental, which is really cool to hear. It made me feel safe to walk around. Right, it's like I felt safer in Ukraine than the U.S. It's crazy, right? Uh, but people are really nice um, here. Uh, what else? If you ever visit Ukraine, definitely learn some phrases. I heard ninety-nine percent of people, at least in the city I'm in, speak Russian. So, if you know some Russian phrases, you might make it easily here, which is really cool. Uh, weather, it's in the forties, and they like it. They don't. I don't think they like the heat here. Balanced weather. I heard it gets really good in the summer, but it probably doesn't get humid or anything here. Um, food. Obviously, the cost of living here is probably 30 to 40% less than the U.S., obviously. But when I, like, checked with pricing, sometimes I'm, like, really surprised how people afford... Hey, Jennifer! Uh, I'm surprised how people afford certain things here because I asked, what is the average salary in a year in the Ukraine? And it's like $5,000 a year. $5,000 a year, which is really crazy. Um, obviously, things are cheaper here, but still, like when I saw the prices for people to get paid $5,000 a year, God, that's, that's not a lot at all. That is not a lot at all. You know, because we went to malls, we went to supermarkets, we went to, hey, April, we went to different spots in the Ukraine. And, you know, I always had my phone to check, like, the conversion of prices and everything. Um, and it was, it was, it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. Um, dentistry is pretty cheap here as well. So if you wanted to get, you know, if you had some dentistry things that you needed to get done between the neighboring countries around Ukraine, they're also cheap too. There you got Turkey, you got uh, Ukraine, you know, um, you've got Poland, but supposedly Ukraine is the cheapest. Um, if you are to come here and try to rent an apartment, somebody told me you'll find a, a really good apartment for $300 a month, which is pretty cool. $300 a month, you'll survive. When we went to eat sandwiches, 
I think we probably got like three sandwiches for... I think the sandwich is like $1.50 each or $2 each, right? So that's that's what I mean by 40 to 50 percent cheaper. Things here are cheaper, 40 to 50 percent. Certain things, not everything, obviously, not everything, but uh, really cool place to visit. I really want to visit again and see more things. Definitely, if anybody from the U.S. is to visit Ukraine, I would say stay away from the malls and visit the local markets. Yes, visit the local markets. There's a lot of them. Um, yeah, someone, yeah, I agree, Jennifer. Someone could live really good in, in the Ukraine if they're making a decent salary in the U.S. Let's say if you have a 40, I don't know, if you have a $50,000 $50, job in the U.S., I mean, you know, if you're, let's say, working online, you're making $50,000 a year, uh, Fifty thousand, uh, yeah, fifty thousand dollars a year. You you can make it really well here. You can buy a house here, you know. And like I said, people are nice. People are definitely nice. Uh, we we've been staying in a hotel, not an Airbnb. <laughs> so, uh, the hotel can be it's definitely way more pricier than an Airbnb. That's everywhere. So a hotel here is probably maybe thirty dollars a night, forty forty. Thirty to forty dollars a night, um, but if you get an Airbnb or an apartment for a month, that's like three hundred bucks a month, right? Two two hundred, three hundred. Uh, you can also get somebody to take you around for let's say ten bucks an hour, which is not bad. And if you get to know some local people, you know what I mean. Then that's that's my plan for next time. Because I know I will be back to the Ukraine in the future, right? Because my brother and his partner, their supplier is here. I'm hoping this happens again. I want to learn more Russian phrases. That's one. And two, I want to make Ukrainian friends. So by the time I come here, I can come to meet friends, which is really cool. It'll be really cool. Um, I want to listen to my dad's advice because he said, build a house in every town. And that's what he means. Make a friend in every town because it makes the world even smaller, you know? So when they visit you, you visit them. It's it's a much better experience when you go somewhere and you know someone, right? I wish I knew someone in the Ukraine because um, I didn't know whether I'm getting charged right or not, even though it really felt fair, right? It felt really fair in terms of pricing because some things were already labeled. And we went to local markets, right? We went to local markets. You can bargain here. If you wanted to bargain, you can bargain, right? In the U.S., you got a set price. Good luck bargaining. But you can actually, uh, you can bargain here, which is cool. Uh, what else? There's, there's a lot of pretty places here. A lot of pretty places. So, you know, you can stay here. I'll go to uh, Kiev. Kiev is the capital. But I heard Kiev... Is it's kind of like the city. The city is always like sh you know shady and there's too much going on. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And it made me realize we got to visit countries that people don't usually visit. Like everybody visits Italy. Everybody goes to Germany, to Paris. It's time to go see countries that not a lot of people usually visit. You know, I bet they're just really gorgeous. Like uh, we met somebody today. And uh, he was telling us about Georgia, not 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 the state, <laughs> the country Georgia. And he was showing us pictures and he said, you can have an apartment there for like $100 a month or something like that. Uh, it has such pretty sights. So, and they speak English, so I'm happy about that. So I really want to go there. You, you can go on vacation. You can go on pr really, really cool vacations where you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just don't need to go to countries that will charge you a lot, like Paris or Italy or whatever. So um, just to kind of explore other people's cultures and all of that and just to see how everybody else live, man. Because, you know, most of my friends, most of my circle are from the U.S. And think about it. In the Internet, they know your location. 
And because they know your location, they give you things that belong to our society in the US. Advertisement videos or whatever. So when I came here, then because of my location change, the internet is showing me things from here. What I'm trying to say is, because we are there, we're only surrounded by things that we know. So when you get out of that, you get to see what, what the rest of the world looks like. Because we don't, we don't do it actively, unfortunately. We rely on what we see on videos. But you got to come and see for yourself these different countries. You know, they're really, really beautiful. You got to meet the people. Don't let the news help you meet the people. Do your own research. Visit. And you meet the people. All right. Good night. It's like 11 p.m. here. So, uh, so happy that I visited. So happy that I learned. I'm looking forward to seeing my family to go back home. Good night.